Hi guys, it's Lily and the Postmodern Mom. Welcome to another makeup monologue. Today I'm going to be talking about some rules in good parenting. So we just had a fantastic weekend and during the weekend we had some guests over and these guests were really impressed with how well behaved our children are. So I thought I would talk a little bit about how to be a good parent, I guess, in this episode of uh, my makeup monologue. This is a day cream by Garnier. It's supposed to help with, you know, aging skin. <laughs> and I think I am aging. So wherever we go, we always get a really lovely comment about our children's behavior, especially our daughter Doris is so well behaved, they always say, and I think maybe there are a few things that we do that maybe other people aren't doing, so I figured I would make this video to talk about that, do my skin reviver. I guess the first thing to remember is that the children that you have were given to us by God um, to be stewards of. So they don't really belong to us. Children don't belong to the parents in the sense that we have ultimate dominating authority over them because essentially they ultimately belong to God and need to be treated in such a way that would make God happy. And we as parents are stewards. We're responsible for keeping um, safe and healthy these individual human beings um, and helping them grow in the fear and in the admonition, admonition of the Lord. And these are words that come out of the Bible when we talk about raising them in the fear and admonition of the Lord. It's very important. But that's one of, that is our I think that's like our primary job with the children we have. Clearly our individual primary goal is to please and glorify God as Christians. And, um, and then when we have children, we hope that they will also be um, accept and follow and repent, follow Christ and enter the kingdom of heaven one day. And so that is our, our ultimate goal with having children is being stewards of them and we're responsible to God. So if we fail at raising our children well, then we bear a lot of the responsibility, um, but then also they also have personal responsibility in, in becoming Christian or not. I'm going to be putting on the Body Shop Fresh Nude Tinted Beauty Balm in the color Medium Fair 02. Um, but yeah, after, besides that, let's get into a little bit of the nitty gritty, the details of having children and how to raise them well. Um, as an overarching theme, I think we need to remember that our husbands, or for husbands, our wives, so the, our spouses, the fathers and mothers of these children need to place each other at higher um, respect and honor and authority um, than the children. I think we need to not be, we need to be careful not to put our children on a pedestal um, and not to subvert the authority um, or just general respect of our spouse in order to please our children. I think a lot of people struggle in this area, especially modern parents, parents who are alive today, raising children, <clears throat> it's easy to think, oh, this poor little baby, this little child, you know, is, has so many more needs than my husband, and so I'm going to place them in higher priority above my spouse. So maybe um, if I disagree with my spouse, my husband, on a certain way of raising them, I'm going to do what I think is best for the child and therefore I'm going to uh, ignore my husband or do something that's completely opposite. Like that's something I think is very modern in your mentality as women to 
subvert the authority of the husband um, for the sake of what you think is best for the child. And what you're doing when you do that is you're placing your love for the child higher than your love for the husband. And sure, sometimes husbands can be wrong. And they, you may think and believe that they're wrong, but if you consistently show your children that you place your children at a higher um, amount of love, or you love your children more than your husband, then it's kind of undoing this role, this um, hierarchy of order within the family where, where it should be the father is on top. He's the one who's responsible ultimately over the whole family, and he's the one who makes big decisions and leads the family and protects the family, and under that would be the wife the mother who then is over um, protecting the children but she has protection from the father and then the children are the ones on the bottom who are to obey and love and honor their parents and eventually when they grow up and they have their own children then they can be in the higher the hierarchical order of being the fathers or the mothers of their family unit um, without that demonstration of order in the family, I think you have a little bit of the breaking down of understanding authority in the real world for a child. So first of all, the nuclear family should be the, the reflection of authority, the structure of hierarchy, and uh, in the family should be the example of what is actually happening in the real world where God is on the top. Without understanding authority as a child growing up, then you're going to have a worldview where maybe they think the child is the authority and where maybe they think that the individual in society has more say than the church or the government or God, where they put themselves as the highest authority, they make themselves God, which is very, very dangerous for all humans, men, women, and children. Because it's dangerous because our children are not God. And if they think they are God, then they're going to go against the true, real God, and they'll find themselves idolizing and betraying the one true God. Okay, put my concealer on. I'm gonna do a light concealer. I'm gonna do this um, Estee Lauder concealer on. Go to sleep. So, that's the first thing. Children, you need to remember that they are not at the top, they're not the top dog in the family, and that you should be showing the proper respect for authority within the family first. Okay, so don't ever find yourself in a position where you are going against your husband to please your child. Because um, maybe your child is going to be happy at that moment, um, but for most of these decisions that are not against God, like for example, can I buy a certain toy for them or not, and maybe the husband doesn't like that toy, but you do and the child does, if you go against your, your husband on that, then you're showing them that you have little respect for authority or that who's really in control, who's really the one with authority in the family? The child. And that's the worst position you can put them in, is them thinking that they're the ones in charge at home when in fact they really don't, they're not in charge, of course they're not, but they're going to be entitled, they're going to think they should be in charge, they're going to they're going to be disrespectful and needy, and etc. Of course, you can have slip-ups, you can have that happen, you know, accidentally, and then you think on it later and you go, oh, I probably shouldn't have, do, have done that, but just watch out that you're not making a habit of these sort of things. Just because if you do it once, it doesn't mean you're ruined or anything. We all make mistakes. As long as we are learning from them and growing from them, it's fine. So the second thing to remember is that you need to remain consistent. Consistency is really hard. This is hard for all humans of all ages, um, but consistency for children builds 
a, a bond that they can feel restful, they can feel secure if they know what to expect. Um, surprisingly, maybe not surprisingly, children really like routine. They like um, having a, a way of life that is predictable. Um, and then they can have they can then express themselves outside of that. As long as they have a structure that they are used to and they follow, they have something to work off of. If there is no structure to begin with, you find children very, very, they struggle. I think they struggle to know what to do and how to behave um, and what to value and etc. So um, being consistent is very important. If you were to if, for example, in discipline, like, let's say they, you told them to eat their food and if they don't finish their food, then they're not going to have any dessert, okay? This is a very common thing. Lots of parents do this. And God forbid your child does not finish their dinner, then what do you do? You don't give them the dessert, right? As easy as, right? Um, I think a lot of parents have trouble with this, though. And they end up caving in and then giving their children the dessert that they said they wouldn't get or finding another way around so that they can they can still have the dessert oh maybe even though they didn't finish the food maybe if you just eat one more carrot then you'll get it you know um you want to remain consistent and it's only to your benefit because if you keep modifying what you're saying then they're gonna push back almost every time to get the, what they want but if you remain consistent to begin with and they, they knew and they, that you followed through with that, then they're not going to constantly be asking for these things, hopefully. Hopefully they'll finally get the message that you're not going to give in and that your word is your word. Another thing that I struggle with is you should only say things once. You shouldn't have to say things again and again and again and again. It's very exhausting for a parent. And a part of that is just being consistent, just saying, Okay, I'm going to tell you this once, you need to do this, and if you don't, there's a consequence. And then you give them that one chance, and they don't do it, you follow through with the consequence. You don't then say, I told you, Johnny, I said this, you know, I'm going to give you another chance. And I do struggle with this, that I, I, I want to give them chances. I want them to do what I ask them to do. I don't want to punish them, but really I'm shooting myself in the foot because the next time they ask, they, they delay their obedience. Uh, because they think they're going to be able to get out of the thing that I told them to do. And then I have to waste my, my breath saying the same things over and over again. So to prevent that, be consistent and be swift, be quick in what you think is good, a, a good consequence for not listening to what you said. So yeah, consistency is huge. The third thing to remember is that um, you need to have a balance of Discipline and love. Love without discipline is is you're just, you know, you're getting overrun. You're gonna exhaust yourself as a parent. But um, discipline without love becomes, um, what is it called in the Bible? It, it, like, do not, it says, fathers, do not provoke your sons. It's provocation. So if you were to just discipline children, kind of like in a very military manner, but not build a relationship of love, then you're going to create kind of a, a spiteful, resentful kind of child. Someone that maybe they can obey, but behind your back, or they're going to try and get away with it, they're going to do their own thing, or they're going to disrespect you privately, or they don't want to be around you anymore. And then you've created an adult doesn't have a good relationship with their parents and that would be really sad and, and I don't think any of us wants that so as parents we want to encourage our children to do what we ask but to also have many times of playing and fun and love and showering gifts upon children as a sign of that love just make sure that you don't withhold love um, and you also don't want them to think that they have to earn love, so it shouldn't be based on performance. You shouldn't only show them that you love them when they do something good or right. It should just be the status quo, is that you love them and you enjoy their presence. Um, 
And sometimes you just have to make sure that your punishment is not exclusive, it is not just withholding love all the time. Because then maybe they wouldn't feel loved. And then they won't really understand that what you're doing for them is because you love them. They'll think that you are disciplining or teaching them or raising them because you love yourself and you want well-behaved children and it's very selfish that way. So it's hard to know where the balance is, but um, maybe just think, of, just think on that. I think that's something that you just need to think about more intentionally sometimes. People need to think about it and we don't think enough about it. Especially from the Chinese culture, like I think our parents tend to show more discipline and, and they just don't know how to show love or something sometimes. Um, so they're really hesitant on how to express that. I feel like I'm really, I'm just like wincing at the camera today because the, the sun is coming through so bright. I like can't open my eyes all the way. Anyway, yeah, so placing your spouse before your children and then being consistent and then balancing between discipline and love. Um, those three things are really important. And then just some small specific examples that I think will make your life easier as a parent and also teach your child good things is to teach them how to do things around the house, to do chores. And now Doris has been really good with doing her drill, right? Did you do your drill today? Do you need to do that right now? Did you clean the table? Did you sweep under the floor? Go do that. Go right now. So, if they learn how to help around the house, it's going to make your life easier and it's also teaching them that they're a part of your family unit and everyone in the family unit pitches in and does something. And we're all going to serve each other inside the family unit. We don't do like um, a star chart or anything um, because I think sometimes star charts reward behavior that should be expected, that should be just normal status quo. It's not anything above and beyond what they should be doing. And if you are always rewarding them for things as basic as what they should already be doing, like brushing their teeth or saying please and thank you, if you're always rewarding them for those things, then they're never going to realize that actually that's something that you should do no matter what, whether there's a reward or not. So there are certain behaviors that we have in our house that are expected and there's no reward for it. And then there are other things that there that she does get rewarded for, um, like playing her violin um, consistently, practicing every day, etc. Those things I think are above and beyond what we expect of her as a member of our family. Um, yeah, she always says please and thank you. She always addresses adults, our friends, as miss or mister. I don't, we don't like it having her call anyone by their first name, especially if there's a huge age difference. And in my culture and in Felipe's culture, older people are to be treated with respect and honor. And one way to do that very simply is just calling them miss whether their first name, like Miss Stacy, or Mr. Actually, Mr. James, okay? So these are things that I think culturally here in the UK are a bit foreign, but we just do it because we come from America and we do it in America, and we think it's a good way of teaching our children how to show respect to adults. So, little things like that so they always need to be respectful that's not something that they get rewarded for they don't get rewarded for saying something like that that should be a normal part of life um, I have to do my lips I'm excited I just ordered some new lip stuff but it won't be here for like another week um, but I think I'm getting a little bit too obsessed with <laughs> different lip stuff <laughs> okay I found an old one. Where did it go? This thing is like 20 years old. It's um, L'Oreal Glam Shine Lip Color 800 Drama Queen in the shade 800 Drama Queen. I'm going to 
gonna put it on. Hopefully I won't die from putting on such old, old lip gloss. But I remember this being my favorite. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty shimmery and shiny. Definitely not something I would wear typically today because I've been got I've been used to um, lining my lips. So I think I'll also line my lips now. You should probably do this before putting on the lip shine. Did that do anything? No idea. Oh, Doris, what do you want to say about parenting and raising children? How are you going to raise your children? I don't know. You don't know? Are you going to have children? I don't know. Do you want children? Yeah. Yeah, I want children too. I want more children. I only have three. You want five. This one. I want as many as the Lord wills. Okay, I'm gonna put on this um, perfume thing I found. Smell nice now. So, let's just conclude what I was talking about. This is just a little video on parenting and um, mainly when your children are a little bit older. I could probably make a video about what to do with a newborn because I'm in the middle of that. I mean, he's not newborn anymore. He's now four months, but um, just, just how to handle breastfeeding and certain little tips and tricks but anyway this video I hope you enjoyed um, I'm sure I've forgotten a lot of things like I always do because this is just me rambling stream of consciousness while I do my makeup so leave a comment below and let me know what other topics that you think I should talk about and be sure to hit like subscribe to my channel share this video it doesn't cost you anything to do that and it helps me grow my channel and get, um, hopefully encourage more women out there to embrace their femininity and child rearing and being trad wives maybe <laughs> you don't have to be a trad wife i just think it's awesome so anyway so thanks so much for watching bye I think there's such a joy in keeping a good home and watching your children grow up and cooking and cleaning and supporting your husband.